So welcome to this session where we're going to look at um, the pool DP and um, catching up on some of the stuff that we tried to demonstrate at Management Summit that didn't really work. So we've been looking at the screen here. We've got a bits policy on the DP and we're going to distribute some content to it. So go into the regular way of distributing content and what we're going to see is that this will create, of course, a bits job on the pool DP that will pull down the content but that content will not be using um, branch cache. So we speeded things up a bit here so we don't have to wait long. I'm going to take the GUID, put it into one of our tools that we developed, which is the uh, bits branch cache reporting engine that you can add a real time add on to it and give it the GUID of the running bits job. And it will uh, look at all the transfers of all the individual files and tell you where that source data is coming from. And as you can see, it's detected that the branch cache policy has been actively disabled by the config manager uh, pool DP. So it will never try to use branch cache whatsoever. This is running on 1605. Uh, we've been told by the uh, config manager product team that hopefully this will be fixed for 1606 to make it actually use uh, pair dist not being disabled, but instead using the pair dist. Um, so not actively setting the flag to refuse this. There are, however, something that we can do uh, to fix this, and that is using um, the Stifler client to actively reset the flag. So meanwhile, this download is running. We're going to go and install our little Stifler client agent. The Stifler, the Stifler client is, of course, used um, in our Stifler service to talk and communicate with our server. But there is also, well, we decided to release it for free uh, in standalone mode so that you guys can do whatever you want use on pull DPs, but also your clients to do a little bit of priori prioritization of the bits jobs. So we're running without internet connection here, so it takes a bit. This is currently in, uh, we're releasing the release candidate of this next week. Here you can see in the MSI, we're going to select not to talk to a server, but we're going to talk to use the free version, which is standalone mode. Just give it a path and that will go ahead and install. So meanwhile, we're doing that. You can see that the bits job is now finished. Absolutely nothing came from branch cache. Everything, the 59.66 megabyte came from the server. So. After this, uh, we're going to show that uh, we're going to do a new download of the same package, but we're going to use uh, branch cache instead. So let's go ahead and take away this package away from my pull distribution point again. And then we're going to redistribute it. So meanwhile, config manager doing his thing. Uh, the install is finished. You can see that we now have a service running, which is the Stifler client. A Stifler client can run both as a service as well as a event-driven action. I'm going to show that we have a bit of stuff in our branch cache. Um, so we're going to go ahead and clear that out using the netch command, netch command flush or br or br for sh short for branch cache and I'll flush it. We can see that now we have zero bytes in the cache. All right, so we're probably ready to re-add the package. So let's head over to Config Manager and re-add this package again to the pull DP. And this time, what's going to happen is that the Stifler client is going to see that we have a new incoming bits job and that the flag is not set to use branch cache, and we're going to override that to basically say, hey, you're actually supposed to use branch cache. So use our bits admin command, pipe it to find string, run it many times, it takes about a minute or two before the job comes down. So the video has been cut a bit, but here we got the grid for the job. And now when we run it, you can see the red branch cache policy is now enabled. And you can see that the progress bar has also changed color a little bit. And this is because, um, as the jobs go ahead, we'll use a color scheme to display how much data is coming from the branch cache per file. So that was pretty straightforward. 
Now, if we do something much more advanced, we'll send two files at the same time. So let's go ahead and send two images to this pool DP. So let's take our um, education and enterprise media. And of course, since we don't have anything in the branch cache, cache, uh, the first file that's starting to download is going to have nothing coming from branch cache because there's no other client giving it out data or we don't have it in their local cache. In this case, we're running in distributed mode, but you could potentially run your pull DPs, uh, or no, we're running in, running in local mode, but potentially you could run it in distributed mode to get use this cache from your clients in those locations too. So I'm going to just reset my command lines here. Meanwhile, we wait for the jobs to come down. Let's cut the video a bit. See here we got two jobs. So my two images coming down. Let's take a look at the first one. Let's just see what's going on. You can see branch cache is enabled. This looks good, but you don't have get any. We're not getting any data from branch cache. So let's take a look at this other guy. And as we mentioned in the uh, MMS session. Regardless of your config manager settings, bits will only uh, work on a single job at a time. So meanwhile, this is running, you will be able to see that the other job is then in the queued state. So let me reorganize the windows here, and then we're basically going to sit here and wait. We're going to cut the video a bit to make sure. You can see the top one used a little bit of branch cache there. We got about two megabyte from branch cache. It's pretty good. So we're skipping up the video. I'm going to show the reason why we're running uh, so fast and it's not using the policies because the BIS policy checkbox, as we covered in the session as well, if your DP is on the same subnet as your client, um, then it will go full throttle. Here you can see the first job is now queued, second job starting, and you can see we get a very, very different result this time as the machine starts to pull. And of course, um, education and enterprise are slightly different, and especially as they're different in the beginning, you'll see that the beginning of the files gets slightly less branch cache percentage. So that the way the tool works is that the percentage that you see at the bottom is the percentage of the last measured block status, how much of that data did come from branch cache. And the more green, the higher percentage. So you can see the light green 99% is very good. The yellow exclamation mark means that we've received data using branch cache, but not enough to paint a full block. So the wider you have your console screen, the more blocks we'll be able to display. But you can see it's chugging away quite well. Um, what you'll see is probably that the branch cache percentage is going to stay very high, around 100%, 90% uh, for the rest of the job as it's finishing up. So you don't have to use branch cache only for um, doing the, the um, or use the stiffer client to enable branch cache. You can also use the stiffer client to determine which of these jobs should be the more and higher priority one. Since um, the pull DP will take every package that you distribute at the same priority, there might be packages that you don't want to prioritize as high as others. So for instance, your, maybe your OSD packages are not as important as your other user type applications. So you could use the Stifler rules to determine that using on package ID to say what priority the, the package transfers should have. So as this kind of finishes off, you can see that the, the branch cache percentage is still extremely high and will continue to be very high for the retainer of the download job. So when we demoed this as MMS MOA, um, we had a few, a few minor bugs in the, in the Stifler client that prevented it to go into um, branch cache mode. So since that, we've um, sniffed those little bugs out and fixed them. So yes, you can see this works beautifully. 
Hopefully, the config manager team will update this for the 1606 release. So if you don't want to, you don't have to use the Stifler client. But as it is today, you have to use this if you want to enable the branch cache policy. And I touched a little bit upon the, the fact that in distributed mode, you can use, um, as we're using branch cache, we can put the server in distributed mode which means that it will query all of its client peers for content for the own downloads that it's actually downloading. So if you have a DP with limited disk space and you can't use a very large branch cache cache, you can still leverage all of your client's machines if they're on the same uh, multicast boundary to provide content back to the actual DP which is a very, very cool solution. So um, as we're wrapping up on the end here, this is just gonna continue and eventually we'll see that it will go back to the other job. You can see we still only have two jobs. One interesting factor as well I'd like to cover is that you can see the, the cache size that we have is about 2.2 uh, gig. Or a little less, it's around 2 gig actually, because we rounded by 1024. But we have a lot more that we have actually downloaded. And this is, as we mentioned in the session as well, we are using deduplication in the branch cache cache. So, regardless of um, how much content we put in, if it's able to deduplicate it, the cache won't grow, which is an extremely cool feature. So, in a second here, we should see that. The bottom job will now go into queued, and the top job should continue. And probably as it continues, it's going to find even more data within branch cache itself. Uh, a default WIMP takes about 200 meg from branch cache or using deduplication straight away. So bottom one is now queued, top one's transferring, and you should see that the figures start ramping up. So that ends the this demo and um, you can see my drive is slowly filling up with the content so thank you very much